thank you, Dillis, for those prayers, those really um, very special prayers uh, just now. So my name's Anne, um, and I'm the church executive for Send a Cow. It means I'm the person who links with all the churches across the country, which is a real privilege, and it's a real privilege to be here today. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for choosing to support uh, Send a Cow this harvest. And you're already supporting Food Bank as well. So, you know, it's, it's really special that you're including us in this. So next slide. So the title of this is, we didn't have this reading, did we? We did. Yeah, we did. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a good start. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so the title of this is Joyful Aid, and Richard has asked me very kindly to preach. It's an interesting word for me. Um, but in preparing this talk, I feel that I have come here to encourage you uh, to say well done and to thank you, St. Michael's. You are a generous church and God is pleased with you. So let's take a look at this reading uh, to see how it applies to us. So actually, I've just taken two verses out of this reading. So, uh, so it's not quite in the context that um, I thought. So sorry about that. Um, and I want to take these two verses out uh, and ask you two questions. So Deuteronomy chapter 10, uh, verses 14 to 22 is what this is taken from. So verses 14, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Well, at a time of climate emergency, as has been pronounced in the Diocese of Bath and Wells, we are acutely more aware than ever before that the world and everything in it has been created by God. It is his. We are his stewards. But how are we looking after it? You'll have your own personal thoughts uh, and actions around this. Maybe you walk rather than drive, you uh, avoid plastic in the, your food shopping. Uh, whatever it is, there's small things that you can do, and I'm sure you do do. And as I go through this presentation, you'll be able to see that in addition to what you are already doing, and by continuing to support the work of Send a Cow, you are helping to look after God's creation. Verse 18, he defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves foreigners residing amongst you, giving them food and clothing. Our God is a compassionate God. He defends the cause of the fatherless and widows. They are part of the earth and belong to God. He has given us a responsibility to feed and clothe them, to care for them. How can we do that? We live in such an unjust world, yet we know that when everything is done according to the ways of the Lord, no one goes hungry. Remember Ruth? Remember she was able to glean the fields and have enough for her and Naomi to eat? Well, how can we defend the fatherless and the widows in 2021 here in Bath? There's just so much to be done scale is so big but you're already supporting food bank you are already supporting center cow and there's an abundance of other things that you do here at st michael's so again through this presentation you will be able to see just how by supporting center cow you are helping our team to support orphans and widows so please be encouraged so today, St. Michael's is celebrating harvest, remembering that everything belongs to God. It's one of the main Jewish festivals where people are encouraged to remember God's provision for his people. It's about the abundance that we have. This is our opportunity to share from God what, what God has given to us with our brothers and sisters across the world who need our help. 
So I want to thank you for your continued support for Send a Cow, as by supporting our work, you are sharing with our brothers and sisters in rural Africa. Thank you for choosing to support Send a Cow this harvest. The next slide, please. So, um, yes, the theme is joyful aid. God loves a choi uh, cheerful giver, as uh, he's written in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 7. And I want to help you today to make a difference with joy in your hearts. So let me tell you about the work of Send a Cow, a charity you've been supporting for many years. Um, and in fact, in that time, a whopping £11,200 um, in, in the 12 years. And I see Chris here. I, I reckon it must be you who is the reason why St Michael's support Send a Cow. So thank you. And then Richard Wilson um, was chaplain to Send a Cow and very passionate about our work. So, you know, we thank him too. Um, I'd say that this church is a pretty generous church. And I guess that you already do give joyfully in your generosity. So thank you. So for those of you who are not familiar to, uh, with Send a Cow, let me tell you in brief what we do. Uh, you saw the little video at the start. Thank you for sharing that. It's a very upbeat, cheerful video. Um, and we too do try to be upbeat about the, the work that we do. The, the um, success stories are worth shouting about. So Send a Cow helps farming families in rural Africa's, Africa to grow their own future on their own land and on their own terms. We work with the most marginalised of communities, the widows, the orphans, those with disabilities. So you see by how supporting Send a Cow, you are defending the cause of the fatherless and the widows. The climate crisis, which you spoke about in your prayers, so thank you. The climate crisis is the single most significant issue affecting the uh, people in rural Africa. It threatens not only their lives, but the world's ability to feed itself now and in the future. But we at Send a Cow believe that where there's land, there's hope. And these families are leading the way in taking practical steps to cope with the climate change. In rural Africa, Send a Cow is working to help people to restore and protect the land and grow a greener and more resilient future for them and for their children and for future generations. So again, see how by supporting Send a Cow, you are very much part of this, protecting the environment in which our rural families live. So this harvest, your support will help families to adapt, uh, uh, to, adapt to the effects of the climate crisis, to change, um, uh, to change their futures, to grow the harvest that they deserve. Next slide, please. I want to introduce you to Grace. And, and you'll see Grace's story um, in the little leaflet that Dillis gave you out, um, some that I think most of you have got in your hands. So Grace is a widow with eight children. She's living in rural Maguri, Western Kenya. When we met her, she spoke of the struggles that she has to feed her family. And the climate crisis is affecting Grace and it's affecting her right now. It affects what she's able to grow and feed her family. So without a good harvest, Grace uh, cannot feed her family a nutritious diet or send her children to school. Unpredictable and often intense rains further damage her crops and destroy the work that she has put onto her, into her field. When drought or flooding strikes, hunger usually follows. And what has struck me these last couple of years is that uh, when we spoke about rural Africa in the past, we usually thought about drought, but it's as much about drought as it is about flooding now. Uh, and flooding is a huge issue. We're seeing families who are noticing the impact of the climate crisis, where they've been able to grow enough food before um, the often intense, um, sorry, the weather patterns are preventing them from doing so now. 
and hunger, we see, is increasing. And it's not their fault. We have to take responsibility for our own actions and the choices that we make. What we do here in the UK impacts families across the globe, including families like Grace's. The earth and everything in it belongs to the Lord. It's important for each of us to challenge our own thinking about what we do individually. But by supporting Centre Cow together, we can help families like Grace's stand up to the effects of the climate crisis. It is possible. And the good news is that we at Send a Cow believe that where there's land, there's hope. We work with small scale farming families in their communities, helping them to regain the skills and confidence while developing their own solutions to grow reliable sources of food, earn an income and become resilient, taking charge of their own futures. Hope is central to all that Centre Cow does. Farming is a vital part, uh, part of the process, but people and the opportunities they can build from their land are at the heart of everything that we do. Well, we've recently started to work with Grace, um, and, it, and she is hopeful now for a brighter future. With St Michael's support, families like Grace will learn new techniques to help protect her land from the effects of the climate crisis. And this is what she told us. My hope is that my life will change for the better. I believe that this journey I have started with Send a Cow will enable me to use my farm so that we will no longer go hungry. And every time I read that quote, it, quote, it sends shivers down my spine. I just find it very, very powerful. So that we will no longer go hungry. So please do pray for Grace as she puts her new learnings into place. But I also want to tell you why I know that this training will work. So I want to introduce you to Caroline next. Next slide, please. Yeah, what a whopping big smile she has on her face and lots of reasons for that. So she's worked alongside uh, Sender Cow now for three years. She, she lives in a, a district very close to Grace. Um, and her project uh, was completed uh, last summer. Um, but with determination and hard work, she has put into place our practical farming solutions. She's now able to grow enough food to eat, lift her family out of poverty in the face of the climate crisis. Her bountiful harvests means that she has grown her family out of poverty and is able to send her children to school. But it's not always been like that. She said to us, before working with Send a Cow, my children were dangerously malnourished. We had no money or food. But this is what she's doing now with our support. Caroline is now looking after her soil by using the compost that she's learned to make. Now, many of you, I, I guess, will know the significance and power of compost. But this is life changing absolutely life-changing for her. Uh, she now grows healthy organic crops in her keyhole garden. Next slide, please. There we go. Now, this is a keyhole garden. It doesn't look like it's thriving um, in this particular picture. Um, but believe me, this will grow enough food to feed her family throughout the year. Um, there'll be multiple harvests throughout the year. There's a little basket in the centre and she can walk in and throw all the wastewater and her vegetable peelings in the centre and all the nutrition floods down and makes her vegetables very, very healthy. I can talk to you at length afterwards if you want to know more. I'm holding back. Um, so it's, it's a really life-changing structure. Uh, it's just a simple raised bed and it's placed near the house. Um, and the, yes, I'll move on. The next slide, please. She's also built um, a well. Uh, she's had training in how to do this. Um, and she, she, it stops her from having to walk an hour to go and fetch water each way, an hour each way. Um, and 
prior to this well on her, on her land, she was walking to fetch water, and it wasn't always necessarily clean water that she was having to provide her family with um, brown water with tadpoles and bugs in, and that was what she was having to take home. Now she's producing clean water for her family all through the year. Um, and also, uh, so she, I said that she's received training for this from Centre Cow, and Centre Cow has um, implemented nine uh, protected water sources in that region. So um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families are now accessing clean water all year round. We have trained um, management teams to protect those water sources, ensuring that animals don't get into the water areas and ensuring that if anything goes wrong with the mechanics of it, they know how to um, put it right so that when we leave the area, it's sustainable. Next slide, please. So this is Caroline's family enjoying the food that their mother has grown. So through uh, vital training in nutrition, mothers learn to use the fruit and vegetables to provide three healthy meals a day to feed their children. A good diet, as you well know, is vital to any child's development, ensuring that they grow up fit and healthy and are, and are able to concentrate on their studies. We also provide um, uh, education in how to cook the vegetables that they've perhaps not seen before. So this is what she told us. This is what Caroline told us. I am proud of the knowledge I have gained. Before, people would close their doors when they saw me because they associated me with borrowing. Now they ask me how I'm doing. Working with Centre Cow has made me love myself and recognise what I can do to improve my living standards. So just as we've worked with uh, Caroline, we want to support families like Grace's to grow sustainable harvests, which will feed their family and keep their children in school in the face of the climate crisis. And what's more, next slide, please. That isn't um, Grace or Caroline, that's somebody else, I'm afraid. Um, so the, she passes on her knowledge to her neighbours, helping them to protect the land from the effects of the climate crisis as well. Passing on is one of the cornerstones um, required of our farmers, passing on the knowledge, the seeds, the tools, the hope, the knowledge, or uh, if there's livestock involved, the first female calf. This means that training and skills um, are passed on to other members of the community so that they also can learn to grow more vegetables too. The pass on promise means that success quickly multiplies from family to family, to community to community and generation to generation. So your gift just keeps on giving. So what can we do to God to, in response to God's love for us this harvest? How can we share this love with our global neighbours. Well, with your help, we, Centre Care, can work alongside families like Grace's to help them to adapt their farming techniques so that despite the worst effects of the climate crisis, they can grow enough food to eat and send their children to school. So let's stand in solidarity with families like Grace's. Through your prayer and with your donations, we can show them that they're not facing the climate crisis alone. We know that when we give in partnership with God, transformation happens. Next slide, please. So I asked you two questions at the start of this. How are we looking after God's world? Are we being good stewards? To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. So can you see that Centre Cow is working with communities to help protect the land so that families like Grace can live off the land. She can adapt to the effects of the climate crisis and thrive. Our God is a compassionate God. He defends the cause of the fatherless and widows. How can we do that? Can you see again through your support of Centre Cow, you are helping our team in rural Africa defend the 
cause of the fatherless and widows. So today, um, St. Michael's, you're celebrating harvest, the abundance of what we have. This is our opportunity to share from what God has given us with our brothers and sisters across the world who need our help. So if you are able to make a donation today to Centre Cow's work, please give generously and with a joyful heart, knowing that you are joining us with us, with our team uh, to transform the lives of those who would otherwise be the forgotten people in rural Africa. So next slide, please. So here's just some price points of how your donations can make a difference. So we have soil solutions at £105, could provide training for six families learning about soil conservation and composting so that they can grow up, they can stand up to extreme weather. Or £300 could help 12 families put into place practical solutions to manage waterlogged land or support them with rainwater harvesting to help them with the long dry periods. So next slide, please. There are multiple different ways of donating. I was very impressed with Richard that said he wanted lots of different ways to donate, that this church embraces technology. So thank you, you challenged us. Uh, you, can donate, you can donate online um, at Donate Now, if you just go onto the website. We've got a QR code. I've never done one of these before. There's one at the back. There's one here. You have to have an app, apparently. Um, as if I know. Um, so you, you, can, you can donate through that. There's some gift aid envelopes at the back. There's the box at the back. There's text to donate, um, even if you, you're into that. Um, there'll be a slide, I think, at the end. Are we slowing that? Kirsty, can you leave that slide on at the end, please? <laughs> it's all running smoothly here. <laughs> Thank you for choosing to support Centre Cow this harvest. Um, and your support will make a difference. So I'll leave you with that. On Oh, I wanted to show you the next slide, please. There's the thank you slide. That's a very happy slide. I wanted you to see that. And then on to the ways to donate is the next slide. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.